good, so I feel, I feel a little bit home. Okay. <laughs> and also we have uh, people from other companies, right? <laughs> which company we have here? Out of curiosity. Okay. Okay, welcome, gentlemen. Okay. Okay. She's asking which other Ah, okay. Cool. So it's really close by. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, my name is Samir. I work as an agile coach at Sarando. And uh, Stefan and Yes asked me to share some, uh, like, yeah, what it takes to, to, to be like a great product manager. And, well, you know, when I see your base that you had here, I was wondering, like, if, if, I, can, if I can add on, on what you've already been doing, you know? There's like so many things you, you discovered together. And, uh, and if you don't mind, I do something totally different. Um, I was in Kampala with my wife uh, in December for three months, and I took some pictures. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so you can, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we, we look at my uh, vacation pictures. Yeah, I'm super happy. Uh, I share, I share this. One. So I was there in Kampala. Uh, I met like lots of people. Uh, had like so many stories. Um, and um, and actually, like some of the people I met there, were unconsciously they were uh, amazing agile product manager. <laughs> yeah? and uh, well, some of them were not really. Yeah? So uh, yeah, let's go through these stories and and figure it out. Ready to on board? We start. Sure. Let's go. Hey, that's uh, Danule. Danule, he is uh, the brother of family of twenty one siblings. 10 from the first mother, 11 from the second one. Fantastic guy. I was living in his uh, uh, family house. And, um, and he's heading uh, a cleaning company in Campana. They are doing domestic cleaning, fumigation, commercial cleanings, all that stuff. He started his company eight years ago, like a little bit like the end of the uh, It was like a little family business, a couple of brothers doing some cleaning here and there. After eight years, he scaled up to 150 employees. Go, oh. wow, nice story, Dan. So, what kind of big challenge you had on your way? When he scaled up, when he got to around 40 employees, um, he hired middle management. He had to, too many customers, too many uh, employees, pay slips to manage and uh, yeah, bills to send to customers and so on and so on. We will, could not do that alone anymore. And when he hired uh, this middle management, what happened? Quality of the cleaning goes down. Drastically. Some unsatisfaction on the client side, um, unsatisfaction on the cleaners as well, Big turnover, quality of the cleaning, but not working. Okay. And I asked him, so how, how did you solve that? What, what did you do? Yeah. Well, he gave cleaning duties to his manager. So once a week, managers, they had to go, like on client side, and do some cleaning work. This is my daughter, huh? it's not a manager. <laughs> and guess what? Quality of the cleaning topped up. What happened here? Is it that the manager they actually like a better cleaner? Yes. <laughs> no. Really. Um, manager they were there on site, seeing the customers like in the eyes, seeing what they need, really what they need, seeing the challenges that the cleaners were having. And then they could support them in a better way. They could give them sustainable plans on which customer to go, when, equip them with a the good material, and so on. 
cleaners felt way more respected than the way that the job and the quality of the cleaning topped up again. Interesting. What can we learn here? What can we learn here? <laughs> if, like, of course, as a product manager, of course, you need to be connected to your customer, no? Like, it's just, it just would be completely insane if you, as a product manager, you don't have like customer contact. Mm. But as a manager, sorry, as a, as a as a product owner or a product manager, you are not a proxy. If, as a product manager or a product owner, you do not bring your development teams to the customer side. You just put them in the very same posi position than the than managers. They will not grasp the problem. They need to see the problem. They need to be on the problem space with you to build the best solutions. So I often hear from like uh, from uh, from uh, tech teams. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want to do like, uh, uh, I don't want to go to user lab. <laughs> Bad reply. Also, I hear like, yeah, product owner, they manage stakeholders, they, stake, they talk with stakeholders, talk with customers. <laughs> Connect it. Yeah? And also, like, how does it scale? Yeah? There's one product owner for one, two, three teams. Like, how do you scale that if you don't connect like teams with customers and stakeholders? So fantastic pro product manager, product owner, they are no proxy. They connect teams and customers. Or at least they bring the teams to the problem space. Next story. Yeah? Cool. That's my Noah boy. Uh, he was two years old uh, in, uh, in Kampala. He was a toddler. He's not like working perfectly. And this is a stairway to hell. Big inclination, big steps, made of cement. Uh, it was a way to go to uh, the bedrooms in uh, the place we were living. Yeah. Who has children here? Yeah. <laughs> What's your reaction when you see uh, <laughs> such a such a uh, stair? Okay. <laughs> block it. Yeah, block it. Like put a barrier. And then I was like, okay, Samir, right? You are an agile coach. Your work is about enabling people. So come on, work on you, enable your son. Like so I did. I carried him to the stairs, grabbing his hands, going with him. And he did it. And I took a picture. And I was so proud. I was like, yeah, it's my boy. I can make a dog. I'm doing. <laughs> Not really. I think it was one afternoon. <coughs> he was playing in the uh, in the living room with the other kids. Had a hard time sharing his toys, and he just grabbed everything. He's like, "No, no, no! C'est à moi, mine, mine!" And he had like the hands full of toys. He went to the stairs to hide the toys in the living room. He was almost at the last step. Step. He lost his balance and he could not grab the wall. He fell down to the step. I saw him falling. I ran, I grabbed him on the floor. He was crying so loud. He lost his breath. He passed for two, three seconds. And I was feeling like, whoa, what do I do now? I am in camp I was lucky. There was only four bumps. Only four bumps. I hear often, yeah, the child is about like failing and learning from failure. Well, not this kind of thing. And actually I'm not like, I don't like so much the, the sentence. The child is maybe 
like being able to make little mistakes and turn these mistakes into learning and not into failure. And I mean, as a product owner here, I was not so good. I mean, come on. He was one, he was crying. Two, carrying toys. Three, going up to the room. Like this is at least three user stories in one. I just gave him like a big batch of stuff and you know, do it. I mean, if you are, uh, as a product owner, if you are bringing to the team like a bunch of assumptions in, in, in one requirement, or like big projects, what you're doing is that you're just going up on the stairs and you take the risk to turn this requirement, this project, into a big failure. Big batches, they are uh, death spiral for companies. Great product manager, they slice batches in small chunk of work. And I love what uh, Dustin shared before. For each chunk of work, make a cheap experiment and validate your assumption. Awesome practice. Yeah. Next story? Sure. Kampala? Um, every day, every single day, um, at 9 a.m., um, Mama Yosef and, uh, and Salome were cooking some pocho. The pocho is a maize dough, um, a white one, which is not tastes less actually, but it fills the stomach, so it does the job. And every day, every day at 9 a.m., they were cooking this pocho. And every, every day at 10, they were cooking beans. And at 11, cooking cabbage. And at 11, 30, they were packing the pocho into this like, little box. Every day, same time. Every single day. And every single day, same time, Brother Robinson, he was charging the Porsche with his motorbike. Every single day. And he was driving to Kampala to distribute his Porsche to the cleaners of the first store. Every day, same time. Porsche cooking, Porsche packing, Porsche delivery. And you could stress this process as much as you want. They would take same quality. If it rain, they would cook inside. If someone is sick, they would find someone else to help. If they are late, Robinson would help Mama Joseph and Salome to pass the posho. But they would always do that. Why? Because it's not a process anymore. Because it's not a practice anymore. Because it is a second nature. They just leave it. And actually all the practices that you will use or decide to use as product manager, I believe that you should turn them into a second nature. Pre-mortem, what if your VP product comes to your team like, okay, now you have, to, you have to do that. You have to implement this feature because our uh, competitor, they have it. And like, go fast. What do you do? Do you do a post-mortem? No. Do you do a pre-mortem? Do you do a, a pre-release? Uh, do you take the time to do like a proper story mapping? Do you study your value proposition canvas? Do you like small MVPs? Do you do that? Or do you do rush and write a document and send it to the development team? So I think like all the practices that you learned like these two, three days, 
you need to turn them into second nature. So that when pressure is coming, you actually use them to deliver quality yeah. and handle this pressure and not turn back to old habits. Last story? Yeah? That's my wife here, my daughter. Um, kids, they had a lot of fun uh, playing with uh, all sort of things, turning bags into toys, playing with the other kids, turning uh, like rainy days uh, were awesome. They were running uh, outside uh, and laughing and playing. Uh, very, uh, very good atmosphere, very good moments. And suddenly, this one, uh, one afternoon, my daughter asked me, hey, daddy, I, uh, I want to play this game. You're playing with mama. I was like, what? Just really? All right, let's do it. In three days, she was able to uh, name the pieces, position them correctly, and she knew the moves. Basically, she could play chess. It was actually quite hard to play against her. Huh? <coughs> Daddy, why do you eat me? Always you eat me. Oh, okay, okay, I don't eat you. <laughs> don't cry. She was so focused. Like she had like all her energy and all her willingness on like doing this chess thing. <gasps> willingness, focus, energy. It's kind of ingredients that, that, that actually we, I guess you would like to have in like the delivery team working on your products, right? It would be awesome right, to have like everybody so focused, energized. So what happened here? Who has children? Yeah? So what if you go to your daughter and say, okay, now we play chess. <laughs> no way. No way, huh? <laughs> I mean, we are just grown up children, right? Huh? We don't drink juice anymore, we drink fancy cocktails. But I mean, like, the triggers, they are the same, huh? <laughs> she decided, huh? That's why she was so engaged. This is probably why we have this uh, autonomy, hippie, thingy stuff in all the agile uh, movements. Maybe you heard about like this, uh, you know, product pitch. You go, you have like a, a, a bunch of colors, and you go and you pitch your projects. First project manager, second project manager, third project manager, and then the team is like the people that decide on which project they want to work on. This is maybe like the, what we try actually to to trigger when we do that. We talk about like pool, pooling the world. That's what we try to do as well. Yeah. And it's so easy to, to destroy that. It's so easy. Yeah. You go to a team and you go, oh, yeah, now you do this, now you do that. And you're breaking everything. Of course you can build a product, micromanaging and paying people what to do. But the best products, I believe they uh, they emerge from self-organization. So these are my uh, my tricks for uh, for great project manager. What was it again? Here. PM no proxy. PM no proxy. Cool. And here. Small packages. Small batches. Small batches. Awesome. And this one, yeah, small batches. Here. Practice to second nature. Practice to second nature, and this one. Self organization. Cool! So you have it, huh? And it's so natural, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>